Hi everyone, this is Ken's here at Fool's Flow and I am so excited to be doing this reading for you today. I felt called to do a pick a card reading. It's been a little while since I filmed one so I'm so excited. This is always such a treat and such a privilege to have you here trusting me with this reading and just being curious about these energies. And so something that's been a theme lately that I wanted to explore was just the idea of contradiction. You know, I feel like the longer I live and learn things, um, like binaries just get broken down more and more and more. Like there are always more <laughs> layers and just so much like gray area um and it honestly feels really good to live in that ambiguity for me personally but it definitely can be really confusing um and so I just feel like the topic of contradictions has been coming up a lot lately and yeah I thought let's channel some energies and see where people are at, there's so many, so it's hard to, you know, just have four, four channels here, but let's see what comes out. I'm really curious and excited. So yes, if that sounds like something relevant to you that you would like to hear about, then you're in the right place. And I also thought it would be interesting. Okay, I got distracted moving those. <laughs> I thought it would be interesting today to try to shuffle all of the oracle cards in advance on camera. This is not normally how I read. I know some people do it to like prove that they um, are legit, I guess, and like have the proof of things coming out, um, which I suppose you could always change things. So I don't know what that really does. Um, I don't really love that people like demand that, but it also can be interesting. I feel like there's a contradiction there in and of itself because, you know, it's like, if one card is put down, then we have all the preceding piles, like, oh my goodness, my fingerprints. What if uh, those piles needed that card too? Like, what if that was a repeating energy that wanted to come out? But I want to explore this way of doing things, and I trust that if I set the intention to get the right energies flowing through, then um, it'll work out. <laughs> So I forgot to explain the structure of this reading, but I'll do that now. So we're going to start out with oracle cards to figure out what contradiction it is that you're dealing with. And then we will move in with tarot to figure out what you can do to find comfort in that contradiction. So I think what I'm going to have you do is pick from these crystals right now. And then if you're still feeling conflicted, you could watch the card shuffling portion and pick a pile once those are created. I don't know. Um, but let's just take a look at the crystals right now because these are going to be representing groups one through four. So for group one, I picked all crystals that like sort of have contradictions in and of them themselves. So I'll show you. For group one, we have this moss agate and it doesn't inherently have a contradiction, but I just liked that it was two-sided. And there really are so many different colors to moss. Like, you wouldn't really expect a blue-gray and even some red, but um, it checks out. And I just love the speckles. I just think this one has a lot going on, and it fits the vibe. <laughs> so that's group one. For group two, I have something of, like, a new find, I think, which is this carnelian mixed in with flower agate. It is so cool. I feel so lucky to have this. I'm pretty sure it was a freebie. And like, wow, what a high quality freebie. <laughs> so this is like two crystals in one, which is really cool. Um, very unique energy. So that's the option for group two. For group three, we have this by Pride or uh, um, quartz, which has, you know, obviously a gradient, and there's sort of the contradiction of, like, this was quartz, but then it was, um, you know, altered with this coating, so it's partially man-made now, too. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a contradiction. Same with, like, all of the genders <laughs> represented in... in um, the bi-pride flag, I think. So that's for group three. 
And then last but not least for group four, we have what is known as lavender rose quartz, if you can believe it. And so it's like rose quartz is supposed to be pink, but I know there are lots of different colors like blue and I think even black, um, which is so cool. So yeah, this is definitely unusual and um, I, I think it's, it's like a shiny Pokemon <laughs> of a crystal, right? It's like different color than you would expect. So yes, that is the crystal for group four. And hopefully you can choose from one of those. Um, I will have timestamps in the description for you to skip ahead to the group that you chose. Uh, if you're still feeling conflicted though, stick around and we'll do the shuffling now. But otherwise, I will see you in a few seconds when you arrive at your timestamp. Okay, so I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I'm a little nervous about this. I've never done this before. Um, and I'm like, I don't know, like what if, I don't know, this isn't for me, but we're gonna try it. And I'm excited for this experiment. So, I've cleansed and charged. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I don't usually use this selenite. So that's interesting. I wasn't expecting for these shards to come out. I don't really know what the meaning of that would be, but um, there's some selenite shards. I'll be a little more gentle next time. Um, so yes, let us start out with the you are here, Oracle, so we can pick out locations for where people are at. Please, Spirit Guides, I'm looking for four in a row for these four groups. What contradictions are they dealing with? Okay. Well, that's too many, so <laughs> keep going. What contradictions is group two dealing with? Thank you. What contradictions is group three dealing with? Okay, that's too many again. What contradictions are, what is the contradiction? Okay, that's for group three. No, <laughs> you know, it's funny, you'd think for a reader who's constantly doing readings every day that I would be better at shuffling, but I'm really not. <laughs> what is group four's contradiction, please? Okay, well, there you go, there was one, thank you. So I think these are gonna be really helpful for establishing the vibe, but let's keep adding on. So I really love this deck. Ooh. I really love this deck, the Empyrean. It's nice to use it during the day. Um, the cards come in sets of two, which is really cool. So, so please, can we add on to the contradiction? Can we expand on the contradiction that group one is dealing with? Thank you. What is the contradiction group one is dealing with? There's another reason I don't really love to do this is that like it takes so long and it, like makes the video longer. Thank you. Contradiction for group three, please. Thank you. Group four is contradiction. Thank you. Also from the same company. This is the Threads of Fate Oracle. And I'm heating up as I tend to do while channeling. <laughs> Thank you for group two. Can you expand on their contradiction, please? Thank you. Group three's contradiction. Thank you. 
group four is contradiction. Thank you very much. Let's go with the archetypes. Yes. What archetype um, best captures group one's contradiction? This deck is so hard to show from. Might have to do two if two come out because these cards are really sticky still. I wonder, I've never tried to shuffle this deck like this. I wonder what would happen. <laughs> Honestly, that was kind of better than going sideways, I won't lie. <laughs> There's a reason I held off on getting this deck for a long time. It's because it's fucking enormous. But the cards are amazing, so. Okay, group one. Group two's contradiction. Oh my god. <laughs> You'll see this is a consistent thing for me. Group two's contradiction, please. Man, some of the people I follow who deal with this are like so calm and put together, are like <laughs> so flustered. Okay, thank you. Group three is contradiction. Is this two? No? No, it is two. Is this meant to be? I'm getting yes, so congrats, you get two. So I'm going for a minimal amount of. Um, <laughs> double cards for this reading, but I feel like it always happens at some point. Okay, so those jumped out, but this is what's sticking out. That feels right. Thank you. These piles are so pretty. Oh my gosh. It is really nice to have these set in advance. Okay. Let's do an inner child oracle card. Group one, please, spirit guides. What does group one's inner child have to do with? Have to do, um, let's just start over. What is group one's inner child? Okay, that really. <laughs> came out <laughs> twice, so just pretend you didn't see that if you did. Um, okay, what is group two's inner child? Wow, that shot out, okay. What does group three's inner child have to do with this contradiction? Thank you. And group four, okay, thank you. That was really fast. Definitely a lot of inner child work relating to this kind of thing. Now we have the Sacred Destiny Oracle, Shameless Self Plug. I have a video about how I modified this deck. So to check that out. Group one, and this felt like, oh, no. Okay. We have group two's destiny as it corresponds to their contradiction. Thank you. Group three's destiny as it corresponds to their contradiction. Um, I think this was the vibe, even though that fell out. I don't wanna know, I don't want spoilers as much as possible. <laughs> Group four is destiny as it has to do with their contradiction. Okay, thank you. Feeling the bottom of the deck though. Both of these? I'm feeling called to include both of these, so more bonus cards. It happens. <laughs> Congrats, group four. Um, okay. Well, I suppose some of you here might be undecided. Divine Feather Messengers. For group one, please. What do the burbs have to say? Okay, thank you. 
What do the verbs have to say for group three? I'm feeling the bottom of the deck though. Okay. What do the verbs have to say for group four? I've kind of tried to like not memorize. Okay, thank you. Some of the feathers are maybe more obvious than others. <laughs> Okay, and then finally, <laughs> Iris Oracle. I would be open to two or more from this one. I don't know why, it just sort of comes in multiples. Okay, pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> what does the Iris Oracle have for group two's contradiction, please? Thank you. I don't know how some readers like always, whoa, okay, thank you. <laughs> some readers like always <laughs> have everything come out. Um, oh my gosh, group four is gonna be so bloated, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, um, I'm hearing yes. <laughs> Cool, okay, well, that's everything. Oh my gosh, thank goodness we can get started. So, yes, hopefully by now you have been able to choose a pile. I will sort of Put them out here to give you just another little bit of time to decide. This is such a long intro to the video, but that's okay. That is all right. Here are the crystals on the piles. That helps. Okay. I'm just going to leave this upside down. Maybe that has something to do with it. Give you a few more seconds to meditate on this if you are still needing some time. Otherwise, if you have figured out the pile or piles you want to watch, you could want to watch all of them. I don't know. There are a lot of contradictions out there. So yes, once you know what you want to watch, please go to the description for the timestamps for where to fast forward to. Okay, hello group one. If you picked the moss agate and group one, this is your reading. So let's see your cards. I'm so excited. Like, yeah, I have faith that this will be a coherent reading. So let's check it out. We have home, magic, get wild, the castle, Speak to yourself with kindness, potential. You have to figure out what looks good for these. Ooh. Let's see. Okay, I think that just fits. Cool. Okay. Group one, what contradiction are you currently grappling with? Okay, so I think the key to this is in the castle card, which I have the book for this here. Still learning that deck a bit. Um, but it really just clearly immediately right away corresponds to the home card. So... What I'm getting as your contradiction group one is that a lot of you are struggling with your idea of like what home is, what belonging is, like where you belong. 
um, and what will make you feel best in life. I think for a lot of you, there's this literal bit of like, you might still live with your family and you're thinking about leaving the nest finally and you have guilt around that or you want to move farther away from your family and you have um, some confliction about that. Could be moving back as well, um, but there's something certainly very emotional tied up in where it is that you live at the moment. It's funny because the castle card in the book, it says immediately that the castle is loaded with duality. And it's like, there's this abundance, these this materialism, but then it's like, you could also be like weighed down by material things or like an image that you feel that you need to uphold. So it could be an idea of like, if you are living with your family, like, that is comfortable in a lot of ways, but also stifling you. It does seem like, I mean, so few of us escape childhood unscathed with like no trauma or baggage or anything like that. Maybe no one, to be honest. I mean, some people. There are the, There's that rare person who's like, my family is beautiful. <laughs> no problems. Um, but for the most part, um, we have complexities with our families and there is this stifling, like even if you aren't living at home anymore, um, you might have issues like feeling at home where you live now. Um, especially if you moved around a lot when you grew up, I'm thinking of people who like lived in the same home forever. Um, but there might be like an added level of confusion if you like don't identify with even having a hometown or anything like that. But with like potential and magic and get wild, it seems that um, there's some amount of shame that you have. Um, I don't know what it came from, but it seems like someone in your youth, your adolescence, um, who's very influential on you, did something that um, is now blocking you from being a higher version of yourself, being a more powerful and liberated version of yourself. And I think you have a lot of, even if they didn't say any nasty words to you, you have a tendency to be really hard on yourself and overthink things. I'll read the words on speak to yourself with kindness. So it says, the stories we tell ourselves create the patterns which we live by. Each day our self-talk is either trapping us in old beliefs or empowering us to live a life of love and acceptance. Become aware of how you talk to yourself. Is it with a voice of love? If not, how can you speak to yourself in a way that empowers you? So... Yes, like you see how there's like this potential, this get wild, like this is a volcano, it's like holding back um, its power. There's all this power under the surface and like magic, which I will read up on that card really quick. One thing to know about the Empyrean deck is that I think they like rushed the release or something because the guidebook fell apart immediately. It has a lot of typos in it and it also just like immediately fell apart like it was not quality. So this binder, this little sticky came with it. This binder is my attempt at like having a guidebook I can use still because there's so much to this and I've only had it for a little while. Where is magic? It's kind of tough sometimes. Maybe I should make an alphabetical version of this for myself. Okay, now I'm just thinking out loud. Also, the numbers don't even match. Um, so like clearly this was a um, little bit of a mess, but we love it. It's still really cool. And like this is working out for me, I guess. Okay. Mm. 
So yeah, there's a contradiction of like, you might have a lot of love for your family or where you came from or what is traditional to you, but then it's like the contradiction of striking out on your own. Like, how do you love yourself as um, your own being while knowing your interconnectedness at the same time? Hmm. Reclamation is a big part of magic. Reclaiming what is truly yours, that which lives deep in your bones. Mm. So yeah, magic is everywhere, regardless of where you live. And it's always within you, no matter what people say, no matter how disempowered you feel. But if you aren't having this release and this openness, like you will have all of this sort of blocked energy and potential stored up and that can get kind of vo volatile and um, come out in unhealthy ways. So yeah, the contradiction of like stability, but there's this like instability brewing under the surface. Oh my gosh, I thought I didn't have dirt under my fingernails. No. Okay, pretend you didn't see that, <laughs> if you noticed it. Wow. Um, anyway. Yeah, and then there's the contradiction um, of wanting to let go and just give in to that magic and grow in that way. And then there's being held back by the pain of your past and, like, wanting people who hurt you to... Um, yeah, come to justice. Um, and it's like, what is justice? I have a video about that as well. Shameless plug. I'll put that in the description or the cards. But yeah, I'm actually going to show you a meme that I really liked recently. <laughs> I actually printed it out and put it on my wall. It just felt so relevant. Um, <laughs> this is so weird, but here we go. Um, yes. So it says, I want my pain to matter to those who have hurt me. And then like, these are people being cast out of Eden. Um, and the angel is saying it will shape them over time. You cannot control the shaping. And so, yeah, just that desire to control, um, I think, you know, a castle can also represent um, having a lot of control over your environment, you know, sort of that, um, like, domestic um, safe world versus the wild unknown. Haha, <laughs> that's <laughs> the deck that this comes from. Um, it's the wild unknown. There's a tarot and this is the archetypes. Anyway. Um, the hummingbird here is saying, like, release what you've been carrying and lighting up. New joy is on the way. So what is the contradiction you're dealing with? You are dealing with a sense of loyalty to home and tradition, but also a burgeoning desire to honor more of yourself and what's true for you. You are dealing with a contradiction of holding your past as a part of you in a super valid way, like not in a holding on to pain kind of way. It's like honoring where you came from, but also honoring where you want to be going. And you are dealing with the contradiction of, yeah, having some of that pain, having some of that trauma and feeling a bit burdened by it, but um, a bit hardened by it, you know, a bit more fearful, like wanting to be this arbiter of justice, but you cannot, um, the universe has to take care of that, you know, I mean, there are certain things you can do depending on how horribly, like, someone has wronged you, of course, um, there are certainly levels to that, but, um, if you want to embrace your own magic and your potential and sort of break free, from all of this heavier, stagnant energy, then, yeah, you need to have the bravery to sort of go out into the wild, um, venture out of home, or at least be willing to make home in a new space if the place that you're at now isn't working for you. 
So that's the contradiction you're dealing with group one. If that is resonating for you, then let's move into the tarot now to explore what you can do to sort of break free of that. I feel like I always kind of go into that <laughs> like prematurely because it just comes with the territory of like talking about it, but there's obviously a lot more that we can explore. So let's do that now. Okay. So today I felt you see, um, wow, words. Today I felt called to use the Tarot of the Divine which is a relatively new deck for me. I really like it. I'd admired it for a while. I don't know. Um, it just wasn't immediately resonating with me, but I felt called to go for it now. So, and there's a storybook that comes with it too, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it's quite affordable. Okay. Are we taking this? Okay, we can take this. The hanged man in reverse. What does group one need to do to find comfort? I know I was using the language of breaking free, but this is about finding comfort and contradiction. I feel like the hanged man is a good example of that, actually. Sort of just having that peace. Where can group one find comfort in their contradiction? Okay. Nine of swords in reverse. Six of coins in reverse. Five of wands upright. I didn't really like decide on how many cards I wanted. Um, let's just see. Okay. Ha! <laughs> the magician in reverse. The fool. Oh my goodness. I love this. Um, top of deck, top of deck. I don't know why I do top of deck energy and then I want to do bottom of deck. Okay. Can we fit all of it? Ooh, ace of swords. Can we fit everybody? Maybe. Okay, cool. This deck is a little bent already. It's okay though. Touching the cards a lot. <laughs> okay, group one. Let me take a sip of water. Okay. <clears throat> I love this card because it looks like my dog. Okay, group one, what can you do to find comfort and contradiction? Um, this says a lot to me about sitting in the discomfort. I feel like nobody ever wants to hear that recommendation, but it's true, okay? Like, especially if you can't escape your current situation, if you aren't able to move anytime soon, even though you would like to, Feel like that's especially for you then um the hanged man is like purposely taking that time to really sit and reflect and consider a different perspective on things you have a lot of reversed energy here which sort of shows um the level of blockage that you're dealing with and I love this ace of swords because it's like cutting through that blockage, that big gross knot, like you're, what you need to do is grab that sword and just do that for yourself. With the fool, that is literally venturing out on your own adventure. And I love that you have the magician in reverse. Uh, you know what this makes me think of as well is that you might have hesitancy about claiming your magic because you saw people, maybe you literally grew up in a magical family or just in general you saw people misuse power so much growing up 
that you are afraid of becoming that if you claim your own. You know, the magician in reverse can talk a lot about manipulation in a negative way. It's like ignoring one's potential and one's power and your ability to um, co-create the life that you want, but also it can be someone using their power in a really um, malicious way. And so I can see how that could haunt you and make you really reluctant to claim that energy, but you have to understand, like, <laughs> this is like, I feel a representative perhaps of your, um, <clears throat> I feel this might be representative of how you grew up, maybe not, but um, it just speaks to this level of conflict, of fighting, of not communicating in a healthy way, not feeling supported by the people around you, and not feeling like you can trust people because people are using their power in an unhelpful way. So just find comfort in the idea that just by wanting to use your power responsibly you are doing better than a lot of people and you are being more mindful than the people you grew up with yeah like there was sort of and maybe this energy is super blocked for you too because the people who and like I don't know maybe for some of you this wasn't childhood maybe it was your teenage years the friends you were around the teachers you were around or it could even be like your 20s uh, whatever period of time it was that really <sighs> impacted your development. <clears throat> Man, I always regret doing incense during these, but I, like, do it anyway. <laughs> Let me take another sip of water. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Woo, stuffs my nose up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> with the Nine of Swords and the Six of Coins in reverse, another reason why your power might be blocked is that a lot of people who had not dealt with their own trauma, their own mental health issues, or just negative behavioral patterns in general imparted a lot of guilt and shame onto you and uh, didn't pass down healthy coping mechanisms, uh, ways of behaving, ways of wielding your power, of leaning into growth and self-development. They didn't give you those things. They didn't um, have that grace for you. And so breaking free of that spell is going to take <laughs> embracing your own magic like that's the only way I feel like the level of blockage um, was so powerful that it is going to take a lot of intention a lot of prayer if you are into that nine of swords is all about anxiety of course and so I feel like with it in reverse it was like people who were unaware of like how much their own issues were like bleeding out into the environment and into how they behaved and how they influenced the people around you. And so if this is resonating a lot for you, group one, I'm really sorry that you dealt with this because um, it's really not okay and it's very sad, but I really do see you as a potential cycle breaker. Like that's the energy that I'm getting here. And so there's that contradiction, right, of like wanting to be loyal to your family or to whoever it is that you care about, even if you have a complex relationship. But just know that there is a way to do that while putting yourself first. That has to come first. The fool says, you know, I know what I'm familiar with, but you know what? Following my impulses, following where I'm guided, leaning into the beauty of the mystery of not knowing, of the infinite potential, like that's what zero is all about. Um, that is coming first. I'm putting that first, and I am starting out on this path, this new path that I know nothing about. <laughs> um, 
And so obviously that can put you into peril, but like I'm getting a real sense of personal power here. Even if you don't feel that right now, even if you feel disempowered or like that couldn't possibly be you, I'm telling you that as you cut these cords and break through these energetic blocks, you have so much power that can flow when that happens. Like look at all of this like swirling energy here. If you can sort of master your mind and understand that there is a way to have compassion for people and yourself when you're in conflict with those people, you can move forward. Because we haven't really talked about the chariot in reverse as the bottom of the deck energy, but like that literally is like you cannot move forward until you deal with these imbalances. And yeah, like obviously time moves on, you move in life, maybe even you do move physically, but until you deal with these baggages and your own discomfort at dealing with this contradiction of tradition versus who you want to be, of the people from your past versus where you're going now, of being hurt by people who were not acting responsibly and wanting to be a higher, more powerful version of yourself until you deal with those contradictions and really look at them and lean into them. You cannot be this higher, more empowered version of yourself. Like, obviously, you're awesome the way you are now, but I'm telling you, you have so much untapped potential going back to the oracle cards like you are a spiritual volcano <laughs> group one and I know that can sound kind of scary and you don't want to like have a meltdown and kill an entire ecosystem or something like that but you can manage your power responsibly you can take baby steps you know you can cut one cord one blockage at a time it doesn't have to be this huge thing, right? This is the contradiction, <laughs> is that in the breaking free, you can do it slowly. You can do it step by step. You can be graceful in your exploration of how your own energy can change. So yeah, this was the message I was getting for your reading group one. I hope that this resonated. Again, I'm really sorry if this did resonate because um it's honestly very sad and you did not deserve to be treated that way but I really have confidence in where you are going and yeah you can find comfort in this contradiction and it is going to be so empowering for you if you do trust me on that so yes I'm wishing you the best of luck group one thank you so much for being here and exchanging energy with me in this way I really appreciate it. You know, if, if you liked this, obviously I would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel. Share this reading with anyone who you think would like it. And yes, I hope I will see you in another reading soon. But until then, take care and be well. Bye. Okay, group two. Hello. If you chose the carnelian and flower agate in group two, this is going to be your reading. So, so excited. I have no idea what's on these cards. Uh, let's check it out and see how they fit. So, first you have campfire circle. What is this? Vision. Sacred sexuality. The dead end. Oh my gosh. Flow with the rhythm. Look at that. Look at that. Oh wow. Okay, this is exciting. I have no idea where we're going, but I like it. <laughs> Be free. Do what you love. Wow. Adventures and Falcon. Use your keen perception and skill in making decisions. Do not delay. Okay, how are we going to get these to fit? This is a bit tight. <laughs> Potential and... Oh. 
okay. It's maybe like not the prettiest, but hmm, should it be like this? No, that's okay. Well, <laughs> me being indecisive. I feel like this setup is weird, <laughs> but okay. This was not how I did group one, but you know what? They are all gonna be different because some of them had bonus cards. So sorry to spoil it, <laughs> but okay. Let's take a look at this. I didn't read off what Campfire Circle says. It says, create deep and magical connections, relationships, bonding, community. I think a key for this is once again going to be in the archetype that we are dealing with. And so I'm still learning this deck. So let's look it up. The dead end, the closed door, the final chapter, the impasse. Contrary to what its name implies, the dead end is very much alive. It stops us from moving forward as planned. Mm -hmm. Last page of this chapter. The end you face is very much a beginning. There are doors opening all around you, not just not the one you planned on walking through. If you were honest and courageous enough to accept, adjust, and adapt, the dead end becomes known as life's beginning. This is reverence for change. Reflect on dead ends in your past that led to unimaginable wonders. The moment you accept the ending, a feeling of grace will arise. Doors begin to open both inside you and the world. So you see the level of contradiction already. <laughs> Note that in most stories and movies, the moment the protagonist reaches the dead end, something riveting happens. You are the protagonist. Okay, so... For a lot of you, I'm seeing the dead end as the end of a relationship. I'll just say that right off the bat. We can take a look at vision as well. I'm going to say this in every group. I mean, Pyrene is an amazing deck, but I think they sort of rushed the launch because the guidebook has a ton of typos and fell apart immediately. <laughs> so, but yes, yeah, let's look up vision. It's hard to find. This deck is all about contradiction because each card has a double. Oh my gosh, why is it so hard to find? Okay. Yes, vision. All right. Which, even if we're in the darkest of places, vision can guide us out if we let it. Mm. Yeah, so this really is trusting in the fact that doors are opening when it feels like one is ending. This card signals opponent space opening where you can create in your head, where what you create in your head can be planted and grown more easily. Whether you feel like this vision is your last lifeline <laughs> at the dead end, or you're just shooting for the next level, let the floodgates open. Live in this space as thoroughly as you can. Let it be woven into your cells without expectation about the outcome. Simply being with that you're building. So, yes, for a lot of you, I definitely see this as like a breakup or a friend breakup. You know, there's the sacred sexuality part of things. So for a lot of you, it could be a romantic sexual relationship, but not necessarily. Somehow it's affecting how you relate to your broader community. So I don't know if it's like creating a rift in an entire group of friends or somehow like otherwise being like a public issue. I'll read Flow with the Rhythm here. Your body is a wondrous thing filled with light and love just for you. Create space today to move in tune with your body finding a place where you can be alone. In silence or with instrumental music, let your body flow how it desires. 
get lost in your rhythms and release any notion of how you can or should move. Do not worry how it may appear. So yes, it's like, okay, could you technically try to push through this dead end and like get through all these tiny little holes in this bramble? Who knows how far that goes? Yeah, you could try that. Maybe you'd be successful. Maybe you'd get really stuck and hurt. Would it be easier to just turn around and go in like literally any other direction, <laughs> breaking the fourth wall, like literally anywhere else? Yes, that would be easier. I really do like the amount of circular images we have here, even this. It's giving me world energy. It's giving me that interconnectedness. And honestly, the contradiction in and of itself of like every ending is a beginning. Every door closing is a door opening. You know, it might not feel that way at the time. It might feel kind of devastating, but you know, if a relationship has ended for you recently and you're feeling hurt about it, it can be an opportunity to remind yourself of how you are in different environments. You know, this adventure here, it is a little bit harder to do that these days, but it's still possible. You have a lot of birds as well, like more than just the one that would be expected. <laughs> um... But yeah, this is so fantastic looking. By going into a new environment, whether it's a grand trip or just a smaller thing, it can really help you see yourself in another light and like remember aspects of you that you may feel invalidated or you may feel like this situation has invalidated and like made you forget um, these wonderful different facets of yourself because everyone is so complicated. With this be free, do what you love, yeah, it's literally like, like I don't know if you have like a judgmental friend group or like um, any kind of group based on hobbies, like any small community that you're a part of. If you have people who are judging you or gossiping about you, who are icing you out, giving you the cold shoulder, making things a hostile environment for you, shaming you for your sexuality. This is really saying you can use discernment and you can go where the energy flows more freely. Even if it hurts, even if it breaks your heart and it's a reality that you never envisioned for yourself, if you're letting go of people you never thought you would be moving away from, um, I just want to say, A, it doesn't necessarily have to be forever. It's just letting the energy flow more freely right now. And it's an opportunity to be happier. I think a lot of the time it's easier to sort of just sit in this like basket of brambles and mourn and cry and grieve and hide in the dead end and like that is okay like that is so valid it, every you know if that's what you need to do then do that but you know once you are ready and you are ready maybe you'll never be ready but <laughs> you'll you're ready sooner than you think because again it's easier to stay there a lot of the time I think than it is to sort of have this bolder vision even if you have no vision, even if you can't see more than a foot in front of you, just having the courage to move away um, and move forward, that can be a lot harder because it is unknown. Like Even if what we're familiar with is painful, it's so easy for us to cling to that anyway. Like Some people would rather just live in that pain because at least you know what it is and you won't be surprised with more pain if you go elsewhere but this is saying that there is so much magic and happiness for you elsewhere this falcon is like hello you are able to use your discernment you are perfectly capable of that it's like you know what you need to do and of course the falcon can fly so high and so fast be really decisive i think is an eagle here too so you know they can have this massive perspective and in the case of the falcon it can dive and be so focused so like trust that if you're going out and like 
unsure of what your vision will be or like looking at the broader environment and you have no idea like what to focus in on know that like when you're ready you can and you don't have to right away or you can join multiple different communities or try so many different things it can be so easy to get so stuck on like the one thing that isn't working for us or is that or the thing that's pushing us away or saying no that we forget how many opportunities there really are like it's truly limitless so what is the contradiction you are dealing with you are dealing with the contradiction of being aware that there are other opportunities for you but wanting what you cannot have anyway if you are feeling heartbroken trust me I know that feeling so yeah it's really holding space for um, the pain and fear of moving away from what you know um, and embracing like complete <laughs> and like even if you don't feel completely in the dark even if you feel like you understand what the other possibilities are that you could move towards if that light is really strong and you see far ahead of you it can still be scary <laughs> you know like no matter, even if it is more comfortable, it can still just be really hard to move away from where we feel stuck. So yeah, you're dealing with the contradiction of seeing how you can flow and feeling a great resistance towards moving towards that flow anyway. Um, I hope that makes sense. So yes, if that is resonating with you, let's move on to the tarot now. And we'll look at sort of how you can begin to break free and move that way or like what you need to think about in terms of at least finding more comfort in where you are now, whether or not you decide to set out or whenever that is in the timeline. How can you find comfort in this contradiction? Let's go to the tarot and look into that further. I'm excited. <laughs> what it will say okay so I have here tarot of the divine thought that would be cool today because it's all about stories stories we tell Ooh, is this for you yes okay page of coins it's kind of how we started last time where one jumped out quickly while I was talking. How can group two find comfort in their contradiction? Seven of wands reversed. How can group two find comfort in their contradiction, please? Four of swords. Nine of Wands, we have Two of Cups reversed, Page of Swords reversed. So, oh, this was supposed to be upright. We also have, so this is like more, hmm, more than what can fit. Let's see if we can like squeeze in more here. <laughs> I don't know 
what I'm doing. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. I want to see the bottom of the deck energy. Temperance. Oh my gosh. Okay. Cool. Um, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, cool. So group two, how can you find comfort in contradiction? These cards are so bent. <laughs> I need to work on that. I'm sensing that you are someone who really sees the best in people. And so it's hard for you to accept when people aren't treating you right. Yeah, especially people who are like, I don't know. It's hard to know if you've not done anything wrong. But I'm sensing here that like people are probably being pretty unfair to you. And like, it's just ironic that sometimes people will pin toxicity on someone and it's like completely a projection, you know, like they're actually the ones that are not it's just not cute behavior you know they're not being kind they're not being reasonable um you really so I don't know what it is about you if this happens to you a lot I don't know if this is like a one-time thing or if you sort of frequently because you are really um kind I think if you yeah, I don't know how often you attract people who treat you this way, if it's like a chronic thing or just this one situation, but I can see how it would be hard for you to accept that people you care about aren't treating you right. You know, in this story, it's like this, um, I don't have them all memorized, but like someone gets like sacrificed, someone who is like being so kind to the environment you know we have here people were so threatened by Fenrir I'm sorry I don't know how to say that name um that they totally tricked him into getting bound up like this isn't your typical four of swords where it's about rest this is like someone being totally um disempowered by a group that's out to get them and this knight of wands here as well is about someone who is so ugly that like they were um, just really rejected and not treated well by people. <laughs> this is about someone who is like so ugly that they were like rejected and not treated well. And I feel like this is you riding off into the distance. Not to say that you're ugly at all. All. I feel like you are absolutely stunning on the outside and inside. Maybe that's part of why people are attacking you if they're jealous of your beauty one way or another. But I'm just saying that like you have been um, disrespected and undervalued and I see you riding off into the sunset and finding a much better life for yourself with temperance here. Yeah, I think there's an opportunity for you to really handle this with grace. This is a card of like, yeah, it's so beautiful. It's always beautiful. This deck is like really nice. Um, all about blessings and let me actually find it. Consult. Right. The Bodhisattva. I really should learn how to say that. Um, but this is a Buddhist deity. It's also, yeah, a card of gender fluidity. So it was like really cool. Like it normally has a gender fluid angel in it. Uh, so yeah, more of that fluidity. Even if you or cis or you know a binary trans person um 
it's, it's still just <laughs> all about fluidity, transmuting, um, you know, there's usually water, fire. Here we go, okay. So, looking for these. The whole situation is um, interesting, but, mm, Hold on now. Maybe it's with A? Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, here we have... Yeah, literally... This sun goddess, the daughter of the sun goddess, like went down to chill with people on earth and they appreciated her and she taught them storytelling and embroidery, button making, sea songs, and many, many other skills. But eventually they grew bitter and jealous of her endless talents and sought to kill her. Literally, they, tra they crushed her beneath a giant rock. And she returned to the sky to be with her mother, the sun goddess, and hasn't come back since. She was like, okay, F you all. I am out of here forever. You have burned that bridge. So literally, this is like people are jealous of you for one reason or another. But okay. Alakite Shavara. I'm so sorry. I really am ignorant. Um... They felt compelled to liberate all creatures from suffering. So this is almost like your higher self coming in and being like, you are so much better than this. Like, you have such a big heart group too, I can really tell. And um, you, like, still care about people who are being so cruel to you. I'm, like, getting emotional. Um, being chained to their eagles, trap. Uh, eagles. <laughs> I think I was looking at this griffin. Being chained to their egos trapped them in a cycle of death and rebirth. Yeah, so they, you had to be motivated with kindness, love, and compassion and never grow, give up or grow tired of the work. And so this deity vowed to use compassion to liberate every being in the universe. They worked tirelessly and helped many people escape from suffering, but when they looked around, they realized the number of beings suffering had not diminished at all, for the number of creatures was infinite. With that, their head broke into eleven heads, ten with benevolent faces and one with a wrathful face, because sometimes tough love is needed to better spread the message of enlightenment. Then their arms broke into a thousand arms, with an eye in each palm, to better see and do the work needed to spread enlightenment." It's believed that everyone has been touched by um, this bodhisattva in their life, at some point in their life. So, literally, oh my goodness. You want to help the people who are being mean to you, um, but I think you can't. There's literally this contradiction of, like, people aren't treating you right and you still care so much anyway. And, like, you're afraid to move on anyway. Um, and that, like, don't be hard on yourself about that group, too. Like, that is an amazing quality that you care so much and are so capable of forgiveness. But, you know, sometimes, again, tough love is needed. But also, are you extending the same level of forgiveness to yourself? Like, I feel like being kind to others can almost be like a way to avoid being kind to yourself so like you're so busy on feeling messed up about this situation that you're not focusing enough on your own healing you know we've hardly even looked at the other half of the cards but two of cups reversed you know you are not feeling harmony with this person or these people it's time to move away, most likely. Again, not necessarily forever. It doesn't have to be forever. But right now, it's not where things are flowing. You know, the <laughs> beverages are not flowing between you two. You're not cheersing. You need to move away. You have stuff to prove to yourself. Um, you have so much adventuring and exploring to do within yourself. So this is like you moving from this blocked page of swords energy, you're resistant to learning, to becoming the freaking king of swords who 
like, can easily become disconnected from compassion, but mostly just, like, can be decisive AF and not feel bad about it and, like, be, have clear judgment, like, not being malicious, but just being decisive and, like, respecting your time, your energy, your peace. This can be you. You can still be spiritual. You can still be compassionate. Um, but you don't need to share that vision, that fire, that amazing energy that you have. You don't need to share that with everyone. Not everyone deserves that. Like, I don't know. I get resistant to this message sometimes because, like, you know, it feels almost egoic at a point a lot of um, weapons and objects that are phallic in this. But, yes, this isn't to say that, like, you are the best <laughs> being that has ever existed. But just start with pouring more of that energy back into yourself. So if you're dealing with this contradiction of, like, feeling like walking away is selfish or letting things go unresolved is selfish or putting yourself first even when you still care is like not compassionate or is giving up but it's not um you deserve more you deserve so much more and you can always come back later if those people have grown and like can accept you graciously. I guess I didn't really talk about Seven of Wands, but that's just like defensive energy. And it's almost like you need to be fighting people back. That's more the traditional imagery, but like you're not. You're not putting up the boundaries that you need to be putting up. And like it's hurting you. So. I hope this was comforting. I hope you can see that you deserve the world group too and you totally have what it takes to go out into the unknown and be okay in the end. You can be the king of swords and you can be whatever spiritual being is in the temperance card. Just all this beautiful flowing energy. You don't have to be stuck. This is not, it's maybe the last chapter or just a dead end within the greater story of like some element of things, but it's not the end for you. You have so much more exploring left to do, adventuring left to do. Be free, group two. Do what you love, okay? I hope this was inspiring. If this was comforting, um, I hope this was comforting. I hope you enjoyed this and that it resonated. Thank you so much for your time and your energy. I really appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. But yeah, in the meantime, thanks again. Take care, and I hope to see you in another video soon. Bye! Okay, hello group three. If you picked the Bi Pride Aura Quartz and group three, you're in the right place. So if I remember correctly, you have at least one bonus card. Yes, you got two archetype cards. So that's exciting. Uh, yeah, we'll see how these get arranged, but let's just go. So yes, these are your oracle cards. Okay, puppet show stage. Acts can't go on forever. Manipulation, falseness, and control. I feel like I'm going to arrange things differently this time. Let's see. Um, okay, you have attract. Yee, those cards are so fun. You have underworld. You got um, bound hands in both of these, which is interesting. Let's see your archetypes. So you have the shaman and the creator. Super interesting. Okay.
I like the color scheme matching here. Let's see, you have Keep Your Word, which I'll read more of in a bit. You have Stillness. The Gallery of Those Who Came Before. And White Eagle, The Connection to Divine Guidance is Within You. Ooh, we. Okay. Wow. Okay, so what contradiction are you dealing with? Group two. The key to unlocking these so far has been the Empyrean cards and the Archetype cards. So let's look up Attract. I'm still learning this deck. Also, yeah, um, the guidebook fell apart immediately. I think they kind of rushed releasing this. So this has been my attempt to still have a guidebook that I can use. It's actually pretty fun. But let's see. Okay. Attract. Wow, okay. To attract is to enter the spiral dance. You're literally dancing. Um, <laughs> contrary to what many viral online creators will tell you, to attract, to be aligned, is to decide to live in a construction site. It is not nearly as one-dimensional one as it seems, and extends far beyond the vision board. Hmm. Yeah, so when you're thinking about what you want, you're often presented with, like, blockages and old patterns coming up, um sort of tempt you and test you. You move a bit closer to what you want, but not quite. Toy with it, let it play out until we cut it loose and move on again. You need to cut something loose here, let's see. Each step, each step is moving us closer to our true desire, the experience we really want to have. It's not a straight line, so don't get discouraged. Trust yourself to know when to stop. Oh, okay, this is changing things. The key to attracting is play. Let yourself enjoy the game, come alive in the dance while still stretching towards the stars. Okay, so this is sort of taking things in another direction. At first I thought this was you maybe being in a relationship and being pulled towards someone else, to be honest. It's like you're feeling stuck there, but you're being drawn elsewhere and you're not sure what decision to make and maybe you're looking to spirit to help you so it's definitely a message for someone but there are other messages here so this is also just your past patterns really tugging on you and your energy and making it difficult to tell like right from wrong or like um, up from down like <laughs> any directions or anything like that it's kind of this pull of like you exerting your free will versus you surrendering to spirit um, and like seeking guidance from the divine but then it just comes back to it's within you so yeah wow what a contradiction okay so your contradiction is about not really knowing when it's appropriate to exert your willpower and when it's appropriate to surrender. Bam. And maybe you've been meditating a lot. Maybe you need to meditate more. I like that we have two white birds here. It's very interesting. Yeah, you're feeling really bound up. I'll read Keep Your Word. So... Our inner child has always been sensitive to a promise broken, a desire disregarded, and a hope lost. It is paramount that we show consistency with ourselves and do what we say we will do, particularly when it involves our inner child. Start with something easy and practice consistency by keeping your word today. So yeah, this is about like developing self-trust. I don't think you trust yourself in following your desires maybe you've done that before thinking you were doing the right thing and then it ended up being more impulsive than you realized more driven by past trauma than you realized um 
yeah, you didn't um, realize that you were playing out old patterns that weren't serving you. And so maybe you feel a sense of guilt about that now and um, shame and you feel stuck or you feel like you need to hold back because you're afraid of messing up like that again, which is really respectable that, you know, you want to avoid hurting people or setting yourself back. Oh, apologies. I didn't realize um, the stillness was out of frame. Wait. Oh, gosh. Okay. Being silly here. Okay. Yes, there we go. Great. Text is in frame. There we go. All right. So, <laughs> yes, this is really interesting. And so maybe you're sort of haunted by these past memories of mistakes you've made before. Um, there's a sense of obligation here as well. So yes, I think some of you are in some sort of relationship or engagement and you're feeling pulled elsewhere and you're not sure if you should trust your intuition on that or not. And maybe you have people in your family or your community or people you're close with, like friends, um, who have also like messed up in this way before. And so you've seen that and you've seen how it's hurt them and hurt others. And you're like, oh my gosh, I really don't <laughs> want to make that mistake. So... Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Your contradiction is... Do you exert your will? Do you surrender and wait? When is the right time to act? When do you break away? When do you stick it out? These are hard things to know. Like, when do you just go with yourself um, or, like, seek, from, seek answers from the divine? Because sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes they'll just be like, you have the guidance you need within you. So that is a big contradiction. So yes, if this is resonating for you, group three, let's just move right along into the tarot to look at how you can find comfort in this contradiction of surrender versus action, creation versus, yeah, spiritual surrender super interesting. So today I am using the Tarot of the Divine because it's all about stories. I thought it was appropriate. It's a deck I've um, it's come into my life pretty recently so I'm still learning it which is fun. Anyway, sorry, I'm shifting things around. I need a bigger table. Hold everything. Let's reset this deck more. So, yeah, this is like a pretty common thing people face, I think, but it doesn't make it any easier. And it's kind of isolating sometimes. Maybe you don't really feel like you have anyone in your life that you can go to, especially if it is like you considering a decision that affects someone close to you, like, and you're too afraid to talk to them about it because you don't want to upset them, especially if you like decide on like not doing it. High Priestess in Reverse. Oh my God. Everyone's having one card that like jumps out and comes out in reverse. Oh my gosh, the moon. Hello. <laughs> Magician, wow. <laughs> All majors, I must say. How did that want to be? I guess that came out like this. Okay, Ace of Wands upright. Full and reverse. Wow, we're having a lot of repeating cards actually, which is super interesting. So definitely, you know, maybe you felt drawn to some other piles. I would certainly suggest ooh, checking those out if that's the case. Five of coins. Do I 
I feel, yep, I'm feeling top of the deck card and bottom of the deck energy. Ooh. Okay. How can we fit these? I'm putting it somewhere that I can like, yeah, have it hanging over <laughs> without blocking any text. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Awesome. So, wow. You're really afraid of messing up. I can tell that much. High Priestess in reverse. You are totally feeling conflicted about your intuition. You don't trust yourself. You don't know what is divine guidance or what is your own ego. Can't tell them apart. You're really afraid of hurting someone, making someone feel like they've been betrayed or backstabbed. But you have to remember that, you know, putting yourself first has to come first. But I do applaud your desire to still think of other people. You know, I feel like there's it's been this very individualistic trend of like, your peace at all costs and like F anyone else's feelings about it. And it's like, no, like you can be considerate of the people close to you. Like sure, maybe um, a random person on a dating app you've messaged a couple times doesn't need your utmost respect and emotional energy exchange. But if it's like literally like the closest people in your life, I think you can extend that to them. So you really want to, yeah, I can see like, you know, if you're afraid of leaving a relationship, you're like, am I going to come to completely regret this? And like, I won't be able to go back to them and I will be devastated and feeling like a sense of lack and loss. the moon for whatever reason I'm just getting a message of like you might want to spend some time in meditation like outside under the moon or maybe experiment with moon magic more I think we sort of had our most recent um full moon pretty recently at the time of me filming this but you know there'll always be another one soon enough so you might want to lean into doing some more full moon rituals in this case but it seems like lunar magic is um, a, a clue here, a key, you know, with your high priestess energy being somewhat blocked in reverse like this. Um, she is very much connected to the moon as well, or they are connected. Maybe turning to the moon and the moon energy can give you a greater sense of confidence um, about yourself and what you're doing that might be helpful for you if you are looking for guidance. However, you are the magician, so you are very much capable of making the right decision for you or a right decision for you, group three. So, like, let me just make sure that that's clear, okay? You are very, very capable. Ace of Wands here. Yeah you can wield um, your energy and your decisions responsibly. You can wield your passion responsibly, your desire. You can, oh wow, okay. So this was out of frame, but <laughs> right under the hermit, we have the tower. So maybe, I don't know if like, Again, if you're like sort of keeping these thoughts secret from someone really close to you, you don't feel like you can sort of get away into meditation or into sort of thinking freely about things um, like without feeling the influence of the other person. And so that's a contradiction, of course, like your own desire versus like the more collective desire, the desire of other. It's like, you know... Uh, separation is an illusion but like other people aren't us and that they have their own ideas and desires about things like massive massive contradiction and so I can really feel your fear about making a hurtful decision here the tower is like the tower happens and then you know you can have a five of coins kind of situation like feeling really destitute really broken um 
disenfranchised and um, a profound sense of loss. So I can see that for a lot of you, the stakes might be pretty high in terms of what you're considering and the effect it could have on others or in the, the relationships in your life. Or, you know, maybe you're considering leaving a job. I haven't really mentioned careers much in this, but that's like very much possible. And yeah, once again, we have, this gives me like Fantasia vibes, if you know what I'm talking about. And so again, this is like, I don't know if you want to experiment with um, staying up all night doing magical stuff until the sunrise, you know, obviously make good choices for your health and your schedule and whatnot, but definitely getting a theme of like maybe you will get some insights or some downloads during the nighttime. So if you do a lot of your meditating or spiritual practice in the morning, you might want to experiment with that. But yes, how can you find comfort in this contradiction? Queen of Pentacles in this, like she is so abundant and giving and yeah, gives so much life and resources to people, if I remember correctly. And so let's actually, wow, opened right to it. Okay. Reversed. Jealousy, possession, a lack of organization, manipulation. So yeah, finding comfort in this contradiction, I think like, just know, I mean, maybe for a small amount of you, this is super time sensitive, but I'm sensing that for most of you, you have time to make this decision. You have time to think things over. So maybe you felt um, blocked from doing that for whatever reason. Um, leading up to this point, but like you can make time and space for that, especially if it's weighing on you so heavily and it has such high consequences, like make that a priority then, you know, like find time and space if this is really important to you. Again, I really do respect that. Um, you want to do right by people and you're not just being impulsive and only putting yourself first. Like that really is very commendable. So yeah, I think you know, you don't have to set off on your adventure as the fool right away. Yeah, you really are feeling this pull. Like, you had the creator, and now you have this brush here. It's like you're itching to do stuff and to move forward, but then there's the shaman side of you as well. So interesting. So I feel that push-pull with you. Um... But just know, another thing about the Three of Swords is that it's something I try to remind myself a lot, but um, grief and heartbreak and the Three Swords in general, they carve space for more things to enter your life, for more love to enter your life. This is a really, really sad story and someone is really impulsive and makes a big mistake and really hurts their partner so <laughs> that really is the vibe um but you can't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm like this person was making such a sacrifice and ultimately there probably could have been better communication in their relationship um Listen to The Crane Wife by The Decemberists. <laughs> um, that's a random message, but I loved that song growing up, and that's um, a, like, that kind of captures the story. Or look up The Crane Wife if you're curious. But again, eventually, yes, you do need to come forward and talk to your people or... Um, or, you know, if you decide that you aren't going to make a change or make a move that um, would require you communicating, then stick to that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like manifestation where you need to let it go and not think about it or doing a spell and letting it go and not think about it. Like, commit to that. Like, yeah, once you've made that decision with yourself then like so I'm just like trying to find this card again like keep your word with yourself don't like hesitate and wonder and go back and forth and like torture yourself like take whatever amount of time it is that you need to feel confident about this but then like try to put it away 
Okay. And I mean, if it's still haunting you, then you can revisit it later, but don't let this like take up all of your time and energy and headspace during the day. If that makes sense, like carve out a specific like window of time or times to sort of work this out with yourself, but don't let it bleed into everything. So yeah, there's a level of like discipline and intentionality with this as well. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Yeah, I don't know what's been blocking you from entering hermit mode. Maybe it is sort of this like you're too close to this situation to be able to like get away from it enough, but you need to find a way. Even if it's a mini, mini, super short hermit mode, even if it's like one night under the full moon, whatever it is. Um, again, something really about that moon magic might help you. But yes, I hope... This gives you a sense of comfort in your contradiction. Group three, this is tricky. I, it's tricky and I can see how much you care and I can see that the stakes might be pretty high. They might not be as high for some of you, but I think for a lot of you they are. So again, I commend how much you care, how much thought and effort you're putting into this. So just like know that again, once you're ready to move, know that you've made the right choice. Don't doubt yourself. You're the magician. You're the creator. You're in charge of your life. And ultimately, like if you've communicated enough um, and someone is still ultimately hurt, but you put in as much effort as you think you possibly could have given into making the situation better, then you've done what you needed to do. You know, you've done the best that you can and you can't put off the beginning of a new cycle forever. You need to move into that full energy and just be, um, I don't like the word fearless, but be bold and be brave and move into the unknown, even if it's just creating a whole new um, stage of your relationship with a person or a thing or a place. So yes, Wishing you the best of luck, group three. Thank you so much for your time and your energy here. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. All my links will be in the description. And yes, in the meantime, thanks again. Take care and I hope to see you in another video soon. Bye. Okay, hello group four. Congratulations, you have a lighting change for your section of the video. It would not be a Fool's Flow exclusive <laughs> video if the sun didn't go down and the lighting had to change. No, I do hope I get around to filming in the morning sometime. I don't know. I like doing tarot at night, um, so I feel like I usually start things in the late afternoon and then time moves away very quickly, but yes, we are here now, and who knows, maybe this will fit the vibe, I'm not sure. But yes, if you chose the lavender rose quartz, which yeah, okay, kind of fits the vibe to be honest, um, and group four, then you are in the right place. If I remember correctly, you had a bunch of bonus cards, so let's just see how that plays out. Oh, so you have grandmas. You don't have to face everything alone. Comfort, nurturing energy, and support. You have, ooh, ending. I don't know if I've pulled that card for myself yet. You have the sage. You have Thanatos. Ooh, -wee. intense. You have, it is time to give. I'll read more of that in a bit. You have, oh my, oh wow. I think I only thought there were two. So you have triple cards for two of the decks. Clearly there's a lot going on here. So you have thriving. How do we want to do this? I guess this is the only way. Um, okay. I don't know what I will need to do to 
get everything to fit, but... Oh, <laughs> tough stuff. Okay, I'll just tuck them under. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Spending a lot of time laying these out. My B. Uh, okay, we have Bluebird. You are being gifted with blessings of happiness and peace. Nice. I'll just let that be. I don't know. This is a lot of cards. Okay, we have predictions of growth. We have Labyrinth. And we have can't be caught. I think the art on this one needs to be out the most. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we feel about this? Okay, this is kind of a hot mess, but I think it'll do. So yeah, wow, a lot going on. How is our lighting? Yeah, not as good as daylight, so I apologize. Maybe we can experiment a little. Does that help? Kind of, kind of. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, yes, group four, let's decode this now. What is the contradiction you are dealing with? It's a lot of messages. And once again, I feel like the key to understanding this will be through the archetypes and the Empyrean. So for Thanatos, it's one of the massive energies at the end of the deck that is about um, stage of life. Okay, so it is death, yes. It is tempting to oversimplify death and sum it up as transformation, but the true archetypal resonance of Thanatos cannot be easily assimilated or contained. Death is ongoing and omnipresent, an eternal response to the gift of birth. Mm. Yeah, so witnessing death really affects our psyche. We are forever changed by Thanatos. And it makes us relinquish control. Mm. We have touched the cusp of the underworld and will return to the land of the living eventually with more compassion and wisdom to share. This capacity is needed in our world. One who has faced the annihilation of Thanatos can face anything. When this card appears, it signifies an initiation into the underworld. Ah, uh, I see. So this leads to another card that's about truth. Alethia. Facing death leads us to truth. And then, yeah, um, so just a shout out. I think this would only be like a few of you, but if you are working in an emergency room, a hospital, hospice centers, and the like, this is a shout out to you specifically. Thank you for everything you do. You're so needed. You have a rare gift that I agree we do need more of in this world. So yeah, there is a message here for some of you. You may have lost an elder in your family, someone you look to as a sage. I don't think that's a lot of you, but that, that might resonate for someone. If so, I'm very sorry to hear that. Maybe you have someone who is sick, is on their way out. Um... In which case you want to be spending time with them, like just special quiet relaxation time. 
There's so many messages here. <laughs> this one is kind of, why is it always like group four that's the most chaotic? I feel like the energy is just like more unhinged by the end. I don't know. It just feels that way for whatever reason. So let's read, it is time to give. So it is time to treat yourself and or others to something magical, mystical, and fantastical. What the treat consists of is not as important as the spirit in which it is enjoyed. When thinking of the perfect something, reflect on how it would make you feel. Does it connect you to feelings of wonder and joy? If so, you have got a winner. Hmm. Blessings of happiness and peace, predictions of growth, thriving. So something about thriving versus death. But, like, interesting that we have death and ending. So let's read ending. Something you should know about the Empyrean. This deck is really cool. Came with this sticker thing. The guidebook fell apart immediately. <laughs> Awkward, but this is my attempt to be able to use it. But, yeah, it just had no backing. Her, like, not a good spine, but... Let us see, and in six. I think I need to make an alphabetical version of that. Okay, ending. Marvelous. There is always a rebirth with every ending, but this card is not about that. Too often we try to dress up endings in soft language that make it more palatable and easier to swallow because somewhere in our minds we believe we are not strong enough to handle it. Do not dare to think that you are too soft to live through any ending. Bathe in the ash of the ending. The other, this had something about like being touched by Thanatos is like a mark of ash on your forehead. Let the full force of it hit you. Feel the weight of it. Stand within it. Acknowledge it for what it is or what it was. Not all endings live fresh within us. Ooh, gosh. When we have the courage to stand in the nothingness that is the end, we are putting on armor. When we face it again and again, we become life itself. Nothing can be stripped from us. We are everything and nothing at the same time. We see truly that there is no ending or beginning, only what is. Woo! Okay, so yes, I feel like some of you have definitely lost someone recently or are going to soon. You are dealing with grief in some way. Maybe you're feeling some guilt about moving forward after grief and loss. You know, it's like, how do we go forward in life after that? You're feeling like very much haunted by that and maybe running from your feelings a bit. So that's looking like your contradiction so far is like, how do you honor a great loss in your life um, and also honor yourself and your need to keep living and keep moving forward and growing from the experience for like alchemizing your grief? I think it can feel disrespectful to, like in your mind, it can feel disrespectful to move on. Um, and to not think about this all the time, but you have to remember, like, <laughs> ooh, I'm emotional in some of these. You have to remember that if that person truly loved you, <laughs> wow, I'm like, really? Okay, sorry. But I feel like this is the most emotional I've ever gotten in a video so far. But if that person really loved you, like, they want you to thrive, group four, you know, they want you to take those steps towards living a life with blessings and happiness. But you can just feel like, oh, it's time to give, like, it's time to give reverence. Or if you're still caring for someone, um, if you're a caretaker. So, yeah, some of you, like, it could just, like, not even be anyone close to you necessarily. And you just work in a profession where you're exposed to death or illness you're caring for people in some way. You're part of that process somewhere along the way. And I feel like 
you know, the potential for burnout or trauma from that is really high. If you're not alchemizing, if you're not giving yourself enough rest, if you're not dealing with those emotions, like you might feel like you're constantly running from, and like that's not to put blame on you, you know, like it's, I, I don't even know how people deal with it, honestly. So you might feel like you're kind of on this treadmill uh, with like, or I don't know, like running from <laughs> zombies that are your feelings that um, you feel like if they catch you, like you will be pulled down and not able to continue. So I think your contradiction, which is super uncomfortable, is like where you put your attention um, you might, yeah, you might also actually, like, it might not be time to give, you might be giving too much, you might have guilt about taking care of yourself, because you spend so much time taking care of others, but I think this is for telling a period of your life where you begin to grow past that, you're just scared, and yeah, have sort of this, this guilt, um, kind of walking through this labyrinth of, of your mind and feeling very lost um, and frustrated. But you have the potential to be the sage. You just have to like face this head on. This is, this is really intense. I won't even lie. Um, and I really feel for you, group four. And yeah, you don't have to face everything alone. I think there's definitely power. There's a lot of solitary energy here or like wanting to isolate so you don't have to put this on others, but you don't have to alchemize everything alone. You can seek support. And if someone has passed on, you can still connect with them. You know, I don't know if that's something that you do, if you commune with your ancestors, spirit guides, anything like that. But, you know, if that's something you feel ready for with like someone who's a really fresh loss in your life like that might be a really powerful part of your grieving process like to actually communicate with them and receive messages from them that might help you in moving forward if you like get their blessing um but you don't need that you that's something you can give yourself without input from anyone else so yes if you are resonating with this contradiction of um, honoring grief versus moving forward, caring for others versus caring for yourself, then let's move forward into the tarot to look at how you can find comfort in these contradictions. Whew! I did not expect this. You know, I don't know what the cards are going to be until I turn them over. I love how this has all worked out, though. Like, all of these readings have been, like, super coherent so I don't know maybe I will um, put oracle cards together that way more in the future I'm not sure but <clears throat> let's look at the tarot because you seriously need some comfort I can tell I don't think you give yourself that enough at all you know, maybe that's something you've been more balanced with in the past, but I feel like it's really easy to fall out of that, especially if you've experienced um, a loss, a traumatic event recently, you know. So how can group four find comfort in this contradiction? Um, okay, literally everyone has had one card jump out at the beginning of me pulling cards that has been in reverse and it's been like very powerful each time so you have justice in reverse very interesting I don't know if I'm connected to that how can group four find comfort in this contradiction of caring for others versus themselves, honoring grief and loss versus honoring their own need to be happy and find peace. Knight of Swords, 
Upright, Queen of Cups reversed. Okay. The star reversed, my king of coins reversed. Interesting. I feel like we've had a lot of court cards today in general. Ace of coins reversed. We're really resisting um, your blessings. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Ten of swords reversed. Ouch, but there is hope for you. Group four. Oh my goodness, okay. This is like giving me confirmations for something in my own life. Um, or someone I know. Let me go that out. But um, okay, so top of the deck energy. I don't know why I've been um, pulled to that today. But then I'll do bottom of the deck energy as well. Six of coins reverse, that came out of another pile. So there have been um, some repeating energies. This one is pretty fresh other than this, but yes, that is here. Okay, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, like, can we just talk about the amount of reversed energy here? This is kind of ridiculous, actually. Like, you only have one upright <laughs> Yeah, I do. I feel like a lot of you actually do maybe work in some form of care industry, even if it's not like healthcare directly, like something where you are caring for others or like, yeah, like you could be like a therapist. Um, I don't know, but I feel like you are working very hard and you do a lot of communicating with others as part of your job and I feel like you like your job but that can be very draining especially when you're going through a lot like you know privately on your own um which again you can seek support <laughs> yeah I really feel like you think it is unjust to put yourself first to not um sort of drown in your grief like this is really interesting we have these two two cards here um you don't have to drown in your grief you don't have to stay underwater forever like i hate to break it to you but i'm pretty sure you are not a mermaid or any kind of um ocean deity you know if you are apologies um certainly very aspirational but um other than that <laughs> I don't think any humans have any business with um drowning themselves don't do that um and with this I want to look up some of these stories so it's really cool it's a book that goes along with this tarot deck that uh, talks about the stories. So I'm still learning this deck. Ten of Swords. It's at the end. No, that's Wands. Here we go. Okay. Sedna. Backstabbing and betrayal. Yes, her father pushes her from his kayak and chops off her fingers when she tries to cling to his boat. Oh my gosh, Corey sinks to the bottom of the ocean and becomes consumed with wrath, eternally seeking revenge. So you have it reversed, which is surviving disaster, recovery, regeneration, and the inevitable. So this is like you, <laughs> you know, it is not your path to be corrupted by your grief and if you hold on to it too long you will um I think like fail to alchemize that and actually end up um potentially hurting others let's look at the story oh my gosh how I knew one was it I like already forgot the number, lol. Okay. <laughs> oh god, that is so brutal. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, this person turned into marry a sled dog instead. Mm. Yeah, this person sacrificed their own daughter. What the hell? <laughs> okay, I don't know if I have to cut this out or not. That is like really troubling. So, yeah, I mean, if you get really mixed up in grief, you could end up lashing out at someone who you don't want to be doing that to, obviously. So, you, like, yeah, maybe if you can't even, like, justify it to yourself, like, taking this time for yourself, do it for the sake of others then. If that doesn't motivate you, group four, do it for other people if you can't, like, put yourself first. Queen of Cups is the goddess Emojo. Mm. So, yeah, you're afraid of immaturity, selfishness, smothering, sulking, and spite. But that's not you. Like you aren't. This it's not you. Oh, I saw her. I heard for a second. Yes. Okay. She's a deity of rivers and surface ocean waters. Mm. Yeah, she gives a lot of life. Um, this stays to herself. Okay. Yeah, there are so many messages in this reading, but. Anyway, you can't be afraid to give to yourself. You have everything you need within you. I think, yeah, you're almost afraid of, like, what your life would look like. Um, maybe there's a hobby you've been wanting to work on, because not all of you, like, this isn't related to your career for all of you. For some of you, I think it is. I think it could lead to burnout in some way if you don't deal with this in a healthy way. But for others of you, like a hobby could be your way forward, um, devoting yourself to learning the craft or working on something that you've like walked away from. That could be really helpful for processing your grief, of course. I feel like that's like very stereotypical advice, but yeah. I, with this one, like, this is so uncomfortable. There's um, a greater urgency in this pile than all of the previous ones. I'm going to be honest, group four. Um, I think taking action towards finding more comfort um, is going to be really important. In your case, like, honestly, this contradiction just, like, is extra uncomfortable even for a contradiction you know I think if you're really struggling with this of course I will always recommend seeing a therapist or counselor of some kind or even just like a peer support or reach out to a friend like you are not isolated in this I think you are a really sweet person who doesn't want to be a burden on other people but, like, you are allowed to share that grief. You are allowed to get support from others. Um, I think that's really important when you're grieving, when you're missing someone or something. And yeah, you know, for some of you, this doesn't have to be losing someone. It could be losing something else, like a job, um, and not knowing how to move forward, feeling shame. But you're not being generous to yourself. Six of Coins is about um, sort of selfless generosity. It's like you're giving things away to like everyone but yourself. And so I don't know if you can find comfort in this because I think you've created a false sense of comfort for yourself where you're telling yourself you're fine and you can handle this. I think in this case, like your way forward isn't through seeking comfort for yourself, but by like, tricking yourself through any means necessary towards um, helping yourself. I think for a lot of you, like, literally, you do need to do it on behalf of other people. And you know what? That's fine. Like, whatever it takes to get you there, I'm totally not judging. I just know that some people are like that, and I totally get it. But there is hope for you. Let's look at the star, too. And justice. You have a big energy here card of 
crush dreams, insecurity, despair, dejection, exhaustion, exhaustion. See, like, you will lose hope if you don't bolster yourself. Mm, bias, false accusations, intolerance, abuse, dishonesty. Um, this was something I said to another pile too, which is like, once you make your decision, um, commit to it, stick to it. Um, so if this is actually you like not losing something but deciding to move away from something because it's draining you, it's not working for you anymore, then like understand that you've made your choice, be the knight of swords, rush, well, not rush, but <laughs> move away confidently towards what is um, pulling you. Yeah, there really is um, a greater urgency here. I feel like this wasn't very comforting group four, so I'm sorry if that's the case. I hope it's still been able to provide some insight. But yeah, this file is a little different. Um, definitely a heavier vibe. You know, obviously you're not going to burn out like immediately, but... The, consider this a um, like warning from the universe that you really need to take care of yourself. Maybe take some time off if you can. Um, take some time, even if it's just like meditating and trying to connect with your ancestors or your guides. Yeah, I think for some of you, you don't have the support that you need. Um, you don't feel like you have anyone you can turn to. And so maybe it is the answer to turn to spirit. For others of you, though, you do literally have friends and family, anyone who would support you. You just have to be brave enough to ask for help, you know, especially when people are huge givers like you, group four. I think that can be hard, but I know you can do it. So, yeah, it's the comfort in this contradiction just knowing that um, you are going to be, like, there is a very clear message of, like, you are going to be okay because being um, corrupted by this grief is, like, not, not your path, not your destiny. I mean, obviously, things are changeable, but your Knight of Swords is upright, which, oh my, yeah, such a ridiculous amount of reversed energy. Your Knight of Swords is the one thing that's upright, so I believe in your capacity to move away from this. Just trust yourself um, and don't delay too long. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, all of this like reversed pentacles energy, it's like, it really is like heavy. Like you are weighed down by whatever this is and it will drown you eventually. It won't drown you immediately. But yeah, um, standing still is not the answer. So the contradiction is like knowing that you need to move, um, but still taking a little bit of time to care for yourself like before you do that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like pushing through, you're still caring, you're still doing your job, you're still um, mourning, maybe you're like arranging death uh, um, arrangements, like something like that. You're still um, very much doing stuff. I, I don't see you as someone who, maybe for some of you, but I think a lot of you do have a lot of responsibilities. So it's staying true to your responsibilities um, and still carving out the time for yourself so that you don't get stuck here and you do move forward in a healthy way and yeah that is the vibe so yes I hope this wasn't alarming I yeah um if this resonated I'm sorry like this sounds really challenging and I am absolutely wishing you the best group for so yes, if you enjoyed this heavy reading, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. 
And yeah, thank you so much for being here for your time and your energy. I'm really grateful to be able to read for you. And yeah, um, in the meantime, thank you again. Take care. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Bye.